here's a very interesting small howitzer that I don't know much about and uh, apparently the Navy doesn't know too much about it either that's what makes it really interesting to me now we'll put the old yardstick down here so we can get a measure yardstick and uh, to give you an idea it's just a little bit over two feet long I'd say the barrel total it's uh, got a number 249 on it that's probably a weight uh, it's trophy number four and again you see how that trophy number is kind of degrading um, I can't read any marks on the trunnions although they may have been there at one time see the bright green powdery appearance of this that means the uh, acid rain is attacking it and if you look down here you'll see green washing off quite a bit right under the weapon uh, where it's dissolving in the acid rain and what's the Navy say about it 4.63 inch bronze howitzer we also call that bore a 12 pounder in uh, English and American standards they think it was cast in the late 18th or early 19th century and believed to have been captured during the Mexican War that's quite possible uh, believed to be of English make uh, it's possible if but it doesn't match any official British weapon that I have seen uh, in original drawings books and uh, in museums so it, it to me I can pretty much assure you that it's not an official British military weapon it could have been cast by one of the private foundries that was supplying weapons to Mexico uh, but again that was a uh, in the early 19th century to the mid 19th century and uh, this weapon has more of a Spanish profile to me particularly in the uh, the sort of a pan shaped bulge uh, I call it in the uh, breech face if you look at that let's take a look closer <clears throat> I see this in a lot of French and Spanish weapons all right you see this contour uh, that that to me is more Spanish than anything from weapons I've looked at of all types of bronze uh, cannons it's a sort of a blocky looking thing again it's a, a standard kind of English or American uh, 12 pounder bore um, there's a small chance it's American but it would be late 18th century if it was uh, the reason I say this weapon is probably late 18th century is because if you look here the trunnions go right into the barrel they're cast that way there's no reinforced area which we call a rim base like you see in later cannons sticking out here uh, there isn't any and in the early 19th century rim bases were introduced for most all and even the late 18th century many uh, uh, British weapons will have that and American weapons but uh, <clears throat> to me this means it's probably late 18th century lacking the uh, rim bases and even if it's of a Spanish origin military um, it doesn't have enough markings to be that really the Spanish mark the heck out of their pieces on the ends of both trunnions on the breach there'd be a royal cipher this doesn't look Spanish here that's the only thing that looks Spanish so again it's going to remain to me and the Navy a fascinating little mystery weapon requires further research as they say let's go over here to the last howitzer in this row we got a much heavier one than any we've looked at so far and this is a regulation Spanish piece uh, it's a six and a half inch bronze howitzer cast in Barcelona 1782 named Justiciero which is the just one uh, this piece believed to be a Mexican war trophy could well be Mark Bronces Vieos which means old bronze the end of the training means uh, they melted down old cannons to make this now the marks are still visible you see the white in in the uh, outlined here by the green the white is the remaining tin after the copper has washed off from the bronze alloy the tins uh, is the last thing to go the, the copper goes first 
uh, and it was cast on 13th of uh, November 1789 let's see 1782 let's believe what the Navy said now they after manufacture at, at some point in its use somebody mounted a very large piece of bronze up here to mount a firing lock <clears throat> and it would have been a, a flint lock up until uh, the 1830s and then they came along with percussion locks and it would have bolted right to the side this side with two bolts and you pull a lanyard the hammer would drop and either the, the flint would set off a spark and ignite the powder in the pan or a percussion cap would fire uh, depending upon when that was put on what model it was fire the cannon much more precise as far as timing than uh, using a uh, lens stock or port fire or any of the old methods where you actually put a flame right here this would have all kinds of cryptic Spanish weight markings and there's some crud on top of them and I don't want to sit here and scrape it off um, or they'll come arrest me probably but uh, if you scrape that off you can see markings under it I think about the weight there's a rim base. You see, like I was talking, uh, this is the European guns and bronze guns and iron um, tended to introduce this in the uh, late uh, 18th century, and there it is. These are dolphin handles, they're called. Uh, this is called uh, bird doo doo, and it's one of the reasons this thing is going to hell. Now, what I want to point out is this piece is corroding probably faster than any I've seen in the Navy Yard, any of the bronze pieces. When I came and looked at this piece in uh, the 1980s, the given name of the piece in this banner, Justiciero, was quite clear and readable and deep. Right now, I dare anybody who doesn't know what it says already to come up and read that because it's completely gone almost. It, it's pretty disturbing, really, why this is allowed to go on, but uh, uh, we'll try and get something done about it. Uh, I want you to look at the uh, green on the concrete where the bronze is running off, the copper is running off. There's a lot of green down there. And like I said, uh, this piece is uh, corroding about as fast as any I've seen. It once had a trophy number stamped probably a sixteenth of an inch at least deep into the bronze. And that would have been probably right here and there's nothing left of it at all, all right? Uh, if you took a rubbing, you might be able to find something, but, but you know probably at least a sixteenth of an inch, if not more, of bronze all over this thing is gone. Uh, and, and that's pretty bad. And before too awful long, these markings will disappear as well. It's just something I really don't like to see. But this is a historic piece, I mean, uh, it's fired quite a bit. You see these uh, striations going down the bore? That It gets those from firing. Either from uh, you know being scored by the iron on the outside of the shell or the straps that hold the uh, sabot onto it, onto the shell, or gases or whatever, but that scoring is from firing. So this thing was in a bunch of fights probably. A historic piece and uh, again like a lot of the others just uh, being allowed to dissolve here um, in the Washington Navy Yard.